So joining me now is Republican strategist and the co-founder of The Lincoln Project and my friend, Rick Wilson. Rick, look, after that disappointing midterm result, you know, some Republicans are publicly signaling that they are ready to move on from Donald Trump. But really, will that newfound courage stick or is that 30 percent Trump base still too terrifying to the GOP to ultimately cross the Donald? You know, Katie, we have got a, a lot of examples in the Republican Party of what I call profiles in chicken you know what uh, in the last six, seven years. What is going to happen with these guys? They're going to all say, I we move on from Trump. It's time to do something different. We've got to get him in the past. And when he starts winning primaries because he controls 15, 20, 25, 30 percent of the Republican base, every single one of them, including the guys at National Review, who, by the way, wrote, an, wrote did a similar thing back in 2015 and said no to Trump, you know, never Trump. Then they all bent the knee and they said, well, the alternative is communism, therefore we must support him. They'll do the same thing. These are cowards of the highest order. Every single elected Republican who over the years has quietly whispered to a reporter or to a friend or to me or anybody else, I can't stand him, but I'm afraid of the base. They're afraid of the base because they're insane people. They're afraid of the base because the base is furious all the time. And Ron DeSantis is the hot flavor right now, and everyone in the donor community thinks, oh, you know, this is great, he's gonna be amazing. Ron DeSantis is Jeb Bush, only a foot shorter. Ron DeSantis is not going to be the guy that, that comes out there and takes out Donald Trump. He could barely answer a question from Charlie Crist in a debate, and Charlie is like a three-time loser in Florida politics. This guy, is he's got a glass jaw, the, all the all the huffing and puffing about Ron DeSantis, I think, is the most overpriced stock in American politics right now. I mean, Rick, before we get to the Ron DeSantis analysis review, because I obviously want to, because you and I know what a Florida man really is, let's still stay on this concept of lack of courage and the cowards that seem to exist in the GOP. It really seems like a monkey paw scenario for Kevin McCarthy. It looks like he's going to get the speakership he has always coveted, but he has to right. lead a majority that's going to basically be impossible to govern, one that's being pulled between hardline MAGA and the more moderate Republicans who flipped competitive seats. So how do you predict a McCarthy speakership playing out? Kevin McCarthy is what I call a sino, speaker in name only. Marjorie Taylor Greene runs the Republican caucus. Matt Gates runs the Republican caucus, Andy Biggs, Paul Gosar, the entire mutant parade, crazy train, lunatic fringe, they run the Republican caucus. So no matter how many corporate retreats Kevin goes to and says to wealthy donors, yeah, it's going to be business as usual, we're going to get back to tax cuts and deregulation, no, they're not. Kevin is going to run a long chain of conspiracy investigations about Hunter Biden's laptop and Anthony Fauci and every other fantasy they have in their heads from the demon closet where all their opponents live. And this is a guy who has such a marginal degree of control over the crazies, they can kill him off politically anytime they choose. He's the weakest speaker in history. And there's nothing about Kevin McCarthy's day that's gonna improve by the fact that every minute he has to look in the rearview mirror and go, oh, crap, it's Marjorie Three Toes coming to wreck my day. He's going to have to do a million things he hates. He's going to have to do a million things that, that will make it less likely to, get, to, to accomplish anything that's meaningful politically. They'll pass some messaging bills. But let me tell you, a billion hours of investigating Hunter Biden's laptop um, is not going to lower gas prices. It's not going to lower inflation. It's not going to make crime less a problem. All the things they campaigned on were, were things they knew would move voters. But the things they're going to govern on are the things that move the lunatics and the nutcases and the fringe and the, and the, and the mutant parade. You know, Rick, I'd be remiss to not ask you about Florida, our state. It was one of the few states where it looks like a red wave did happen. Let's talk about South Florida and specifically Miami-Dade County. It flipped red for a gubernatorial candidate in Ron DeSantis for the first time in two decades. But just four years ago in 2018, DeSantis lost that county by almost 20 points. You know Florida politics yep. as well as anyone. What is happening in this state? I'm going to run it down with three simple answers. Money, money, and money. 
The Democratic Party of Florida does not have any money. They are broke. They are incompetent. They need to be burned to the ground and rebuilt from scratch. That is a party that cannot organize a two-car motorcade, and they do not have enough competent people working there to sit at a table at a Waffle House. That is some tough love, but it is true. Ron DeSantis put money into Miami-Dade. They put money into Broward. They put money into Palm Beach at scale. They went in and just swamped the crap out of the Democratic Party there by just doing the outreach and the work that money can bring you. I want to say this. It's less of a red wave than a red machine. The Republican Party of Florida is extraordinarily good at what it does. It is the best organized, funded, trained party in the country. That's not a compliment that I give lightly, but these are people who know what they're doing. If the Democratic Party does not reorganize itself and fix itself and rebuild itself, they will always have their lunch money taken away by these guys. They are very, very good at what they do. The surprise isn't that Ron DeSantis won by 20 points. It's that he didn't win by 40 points. That's how terrible the Democratic system, campaigners, and candidates are in this state. They are getting beaten because they won't fix their business. So, Rick, obviously, the 2024 wheels, they're turning. Mike Pence is oh. out there inching away from Donald Trump. Uh, that Trump-DeSantis feud starting to come to a simmer. Lots of others seem poised to jump into the fray soon. How is all of this going to play out? And I'm going to give you a short runway, just over the next few months and not necessarily over the next right. two years. Right. Look, Mike Pence is going to place uh, 17th in a field of 15 in Iowa. He has there's no there's no argument for Mike Pence to run. There's no reason for Mike Pence to run. He cannot win. He is unloved by the Republican base. They view him as a traitor. Um, I don't know why he's doing this. I, in some weird masochism of Mike Pence, this is a guy who clearly wants to be shamed in public. He clearly wants to have his face rubbed in it. He's going to get beat so bad, it's going to set historic records for humiliation politically. Why he's doing it, I don't know. Does he think there's a constituency out there for him? I, I, I can't find it. And I'm a pretty astute anthropologist of the Republican base. This is a guy who, who is doing this for, for whatever weird reasons, but he's going to fail utterly. The, there are a whole bunch of other like small pilot fish running around, Mike Pompeo, Nikki Haley, Josh Hawley. All of them are going to end up in the same position. They're going to all divide up a little fraction of the vote and, and wonder why they got stepped on by Bigfoot. Rick, I got like less than a minute left, but I have to ask you about Resolute Square. One of its slogans, we're right, they're wrong. Why the need for a new organization? And let, us, let our viewers know, what is Resolute Square? Resolute Square is a media platform for creators and strategists and activists around the country that we're forming outside of the Lincoln Project. It's, it, there are some Lincoln alumni there, but it's run by a bunch of amazing media and tech professionals. And um, it's the home of my new podcast, The Enemies List. And we've got a bunch of different uh, writers and, and creators coming in there for podcasts, for streaming channel shows, et cetera, because we realize you have to fight the battle beyond what a super PAC or a campaign can do. You've got to get out there in the culture. You've got to get out there in the battle of ideas. You've got to get out there and fight this thing beyond just you know what you can do with television ads or digital ads with a super PAC. So we're looking forward to taking on the MAGA media enterprise you know, that's funded by billionaires everywhere, you know, that takes to take on the Steve Bannons, the Alex Joneses, and yes, even the Rupert Murdochs. We're gonna climb, we're gonna try to climb that high hill and cause them to have some of the pain that they've inflicted on America, inflicted back on them. Rick Wilson, my friend, thanks for taking the time to come and help us break thanks, it Katie. all down. I appreciate you. Thanks. Anytime. See you soon.